The particular type of gastroesophageal balloon tamponade tube depicted in this video is the Blakemore esophageal nasogastric tube. This device is a double balloon, triple lumen tube. The main lumen is for gastric aspiration and suction and is contiguous with the multiple drainage ports on the distal end of the tube. The other two lumens are used to inflate the gastric and esophageal balloons. Note that these lumens have removable plastic plugs that can be inserted to prevent balloon deflation. Unlike the Minnesota tube, the Blakemore tube does not have a port for esophageal aspiration. A nasogastric tube may be attached to the Blakemore tube with silk sutures, with its tip just proximal to the esophageal balloon to provide for esophageal aspiration. Additional equipment required for the procedure includes a manual manometer or sphygmomanometer, a Y-tube connector, topical anesthetics, vasoconstrictors, and lubricants, tube clamps, or hemostats with rubber sleeves, a 60 milliliter catheter tip syringe, and surgical scissors for emergency balloon decompression. The specific equipment used for balloon tamponade of gastroesophageal varices will vary by local policy. Be familiar with the equipment available at your institution. The balloons on the Blakemore tube may be filled with a 60 milliliter catheter tipped syringe, provided that the balloon inflation tubes are clamped shut before the syringe is removed and refilled with air. If available, a piece of Y glass tubing may be used so that both a bulb from a blood pressure cuff and a manometer can be connected to the Blakemore tube. This is a radiograph of a Blakemore tube in isolation. Note that the entire tube is densely radio-opaque. This is important since chest radiographs will be required to confirm proper placement during the insertion sequence. Prior to tube insertion, check both the gastric and esophageal balloons for leaks by inflating them with air. If there is any question regarding the patency of the balloons, submerge them in water during inflation. Completely deflate the balloons after testing and either clamp or insert the plastic plugs into the lumen ports to maintain complete decompression of the balloons during insertion. If desired, you may attach a nasogastric tube to the Blakemore tube with silk sutures to provide a means of esophageal aspiration. Position the tip of the NG tube three centimeters proximal to the esophageal balloon. Coat the distal portion of the tube and the balloons with a water-soluble lubricant. Viscous lidocaine is ideal if available. Gastric lavage with a standard nasogastric tube should be performed prior to placement of the Blakemore tube in order to decrease regurgitation during the procedure. Placement of the Blakemore tube places the patient at a substantial risk for regurgitation and aspiration and you should have a low threshold to perform endotracheal intubation prior to the procedure. The Blakemore tube may be passed either orally or nasally. Oral insertion is preferred, especially in patients who are tracheally intubated. Nasal insertion is analogous to nasogastric tube insertion. Be sure to apply a topical vasoconstrictor and anesthetic prior to tube insertion. Refer to the nasogastric intubation chapter for details on passage of an NG tube. Insert the tube to at least the 50 centimeter mark or to the maximum depth allowed by the length of the tube. Apply suction to the gastric aspiration port to empty the stomach which will aid in the prevention of regurgitation. Obtain a chest radiograph at this point to confirm proper intragastric placement of the gastric balloon. Inflate the gastric balloon with 200 to 250 milliliters of air and then clamp the balloon inflation tube approximately three centimeters from the end of the tube. Next, 
Pull back on the tube until the resistance of the diaphragm is felt. While maintaining a minimal amount of tension on the tube, fix the upper end of the tube by placing the sponge rubber cuff at the nostril and then taping the tube and the cuff to the patient's nose. Other methods of fixing the tube in place are available. Refer to the written portion of this procedure for more details. Next, inflate the esophageal balloon using the Y tube, which is connected to the inflation port, the bulb, and the manometer. Inflate the balloon to 35 to 40 millimeters of mercury of pressure. Connect the gastric aspiration port to intermittent wall suction and lavage the stomach until it is clear. If bright red blood continues to be lavaged from the stomach after 30 minutes, increase the esophageal balloon pressure to 45 millimeters of mercury. Be sure to securely reclamp the inflation port. Continuously monitor the inflation pressure of the esophageal balloon while it is inflated. The baseline pressure should not exceed 45 millimeters of mercury. If bleeding persists after full inflation of the esophageal balloon, the bleeding may be originating from a gastric wall varix. In this situation, increase the traction on the tube by pulling it more taut and then refixing it in the new position. Keep the gastric port attached to 60 to 120 millimeters of mercury of intermittent suction. The nasogastric tube in the esophagus should be attached to a similar amount of continuous suction. Maintain the esophageal balloon at the lowest pressure that will control bleeding. Reduce the pressure by 5 millimeters of mercury every 3 hours and continuously assess for re-bleeding. Reinflate the balloon immediately if bleeding occurs. Maintain the balloon at the minimum pressure for at least 24 hours. To prevent mucosal ischemia, deflate the esophageal balloon for 5 minutes every 6 hours. Soft restraints, sedatives, and analgesics will be required to maintain the patient's comfort and safety while the tube is inserted. Emergent surgery and gastroenterology consultations should be obtained.